Hello and welcome to our channel, Cheating Exposed. Today, we're revealing another story to uncover the truth behind the lies. So, let's get started. My story is about my ex-wife cheating on me after 26 years. I am not really looking for advice, since I have finally moved on. I just want to share this in case it helps someone, and I hope this helps me, too. I made a lot of mistakes, the pick-me dance, etc., because I misunderstood her actions. I'm going to tell it from my point of view, as I found out, and then I will go back and fill in what she did before I knew, based on her admitting it and me looking through her digital footprint. Some of this is very private and unpleasant, so please read at your own risk. I just need to let it all out. Very early on, I was on a thread on Reddit, but I wanted reconciliation, and since this forum is more pro-divorce, I couldn't read the threads. It hurt too much. I wish I had read them and done the 180, etc. I couldn't at the time, which is okay. You can only do what you can do. I, male 44, moved to a new state before my senior year in high school. I met my wife, female 44, a few weeks after school started. She was my first girlfriend and still my only kiss, sexual partner, relationship, etc. Within a few months, I was in love. It took her longer to fall in love, but I wasn't too worried. We dated for eight years, but knew we'd marry after two years or so. We met when we were 17, so we wanted to be older and more mature when we got married. We were married for 18 years and together for over 26. We had a successful business and were able to move around the country as our business was home-based. My wife helped me, but she was mostly living off my work. I didn't mind. I was raised with the belief that the man should be the breadwinner. We had the normal ups and downs. Then, in 2015, her mom got cancer and died the next year. Her dad passed nine months later. Our business failed in late 2019, and we filed for bankruptcy in early 2020. I was pretty depressed through all of this. I was in individual counselling for many years. The one thing I thought was good in my life was my marriage, but with our business not doing well, my wife got a job to help us. It was at a large retail store where she was promoted to manager. I gained £100 over the course of a few years, so now I am overweight, have lost my business, and am at the lowest point of my life. When Covid ramped up and the lockdowns hit, I was pretty much a shut-in due to having asthma and being worried. My wife worked throughout all of this. She started working late, and on her days off, she would go to Target and shop a lot, which during lockdown should have been a red flag. One Sunday morning, she woke me up at 6am and said she was going to the park to walk because her legs were restless. Kind of weird, but I would walk on our treadmill in the middle of the night at times due to restless leg syndrome, RLS, so no big deal. She gets home, we eat breakfast, she showers, etc. Then, as I am in the office on my computer, she walks in naked, turns around showing me her full body, and then goes to the bedroom. I follow, as we had a very active sex life. She wants me to please her orally, but I notice a weird smell, sex, basically, so I don't proceed. I leave the room thinking it was from her walking at the park. At this point, her cheating on me is so far from my thinking, I wasn't alarmed, but something is stirring in my head. The next day, I look at her browsing history, and she was on the Facebook page of two guys that I know don't work at her store. I get concerned, as she doesn't have male friends that aren't co-workers. Another day goes by, and my mind is still wondering. My D-Day was July 22nd, 2020, at 3 a.m. I wake up and think I should grab her phone and look. I lay in bed for a while, debating if I should even get up because I am tired. Finally, I grab her phone, not knowing what to look for. Almost instantly, I see Snapchat, which I didn't know she had. She has three friends, all male, two that she was looking at on Facebook, and a guy she works with. She never admits to anything with the guy from work, but I don't believe her. She wakes up and asks if I am okay. I ask if she is cheating on me. She says no. 
We talk for a few hours, and I find out I can download her Snapchat history. So, I lock myself in the bedroom and proceed to do so. She begs me not to, saying it's bad, and admits to cheating on me. Boom, my entire life is blown to pieces. The feeling of pain can only be understood by those of us who have been betrayed. I feel she abandoned me at my lowest, when I needed her the most. She denies this, but facts are facts. She throws it in my face that she is supporting us. I guess she forgot the first 16 years of our marriage when she didn't have to work and could shop all the time. Oh yeah, she now says she's not materialistic. Again, that's news to me, as she loves to shop. You know how they say they cheat down? Well, these guys are both broke losers. One even borrowed money from my wife, more on that later, and the other lives in a crappy trailer owned by a relative because his credit is so poor he can't rent on his own and has gotten over 10 DUIs. I message both guys on Facebook, telling them they are pieces of crap and informing each about the other guy. Funny how they were upset she was cheating on me with more than just them. One never replies. The one who stole the money now wants to fight me. I find out later he is obsessed with fighting me and keeps telling my wife he wants to fight. She slowly admits to things, but it's trickle truths. I ask about protection, she says, of course, that's what people do now. She makes it seem like she didn't do much, it wasn't special, just sex, but nothing like with me. On D-Day, I asked her to message each guy, saying it's over, my husband knows, and it takes her seven hours to send the messages. Meanwhile, I am begging her to send them. Later, I ask her eight questions about things they did, she admits to only two of them. We get tested for STDs, luckily, we have none. I remember a few weeks before I found out, she wanted me to please her, and I noticed something down there. I make a face, and she jumps up and runs to the bathroom, saying it was discharge. I wasn't alarmed at the time, but now, knowing everything, I'm completely grossed out. Luckily, I stopped, but looking back, I can't believe she asked me to do that after being with someone else. The disrespect, knowing full well I was oblivious. Did that excite her? She has so little respect for me that she would ask me for something so intimate, fully aware of what she had done. Or was it something she talked to those guys about, like they all got off on the idea of me doing that? Her excuses were the usual, I didn't love her anymore, which wasn't true at all, she never had her wild college years, we didn't make each other happy anymore, which was news to me, and she never once brought these issues up to me. She also blamed her promiscuous siblings, being addicted to the attention, COVID, there were so many excuses I've thankfully forgotten most of them. The next few weeks were nothing but pain. She said sorry, over and over, claiming she never actually wanted to leave me. She even said she didn't really think about it, she just did it. That hurt. She didn't think about ruining our marriage, didn't think about destroying me. No, she just screwed both of those guys. One of them liked to talk about our marriage. He even said, I bet your husband is cheating on you. She responded, my husband would never cheat on me. The irony. Now I see it for what it was, pure narcissism. He also asked her, what would your husband do if he knew? She replied, he would kill himself. She told me about this conversation, and I got upset. She then claimed it was just a joke. That didn't make it better, it made it worse. She was joking about my potential suicide with the guy she was cheating on me with. And then, she said, my husband will never divorce me. Two weeks later, I decided to end it. I had been suicidal for several years due to my depression, and I was already in IC for it. I wrote a note, took a picture of it, and sent it to her. She called the cops. They found me, handcuffed me, and took me to the hospital. I was released soon after, but over the next few months, I tried to kill myself multiple times. I even googled ways to do it. But each time, something stopped me. Now, I'm glad I didn't go through with it. There is life after this. As for her, it turns out she never cut contact with either of those guys. Luckily, one of the guys says, best of luck, and as far as I know, 
they don't have contact anymore. The other guy? Well, she stays in constant contact with him because she loaned him money and wants it back. I tell her to just let the money go. She refuses, saying she can't. I know it's more than just about the money, but she denies it. What she doesn't know is that I have her Facebook password and I've been reading her messages to the money guy. At one point, he blocks her. But she remembers she has his phone number and texts him from work. They get into a fight and then he has the audacity to ask if he can duck her again. She says maybe. I only learned this because she bragged about it to a friend on FB Messenger and I read it. Immediately, I confront her, asking if she's planning to sleep with him again. She says no. I tell her I saw her phone, so she doesn't know that I've been reading her Facebook messages. Eventually, she admits the truth. In a fit of rage, I punch a hole through our bedroom door. She tells him he has until Friday to pay her back. After six long weeks, he finally tells her he's not paying her back. At that moment, she snaps out of whatever fog she was in, saying she feels free. Looking back, this is probably when I should have left, or even on D-Day. But when your entire world collapses out of nowhere, it's hard to just walk away. The next eight months are filled with constant fighting. I keep finding more evidence, and I can't stop digging. She only admits to what I already know, but the list of her lies keeps growing. She says all the right things, but I can't accept what she's done. Deep down, though, I realize I can't imagine life without her. We start marriage counseling, MC. I tell the therapists that we've been together for 26 years, and afterward, my wife says she was annoyed by the way I said it with pride. I just shake my head. I can't handle the marriage counseling sessions because they force us to talk about the physical aspects of her affairs. Eventually, we stop going. A month later, I find her diary. Yes, she kept a diary, documenting dates, which guy she was with, what they did, and how much she enjoyed it. Remember the eight questions I asked her? She lied about every single one. No surprise there. Of course, she never used protection. Her diary confirms that. One of the guys even did drugs with her in our apartment. To her, this didn't seem like a big deal. She was also drinking at night after I went to bed, even though neither of us had ever been into drinking. She loved to document everything, where each guy finished, every little detail. In one post, she wrote that one of the guys was bigger than she was used to and that his instrument satisfied her completely. He would make her orgasm, let her rest, and then start all over again. That broke me. After 26 years together, this is what she's focusing on. When I confronted her about it, she twisted things around, saying I was more upset about that specific detail than about working through things with her. Then, I found out she took a pregnancy test. She claimed it was just to confirm what she already knew, that she wasn't pregnant. But the timing was painful. We were never able to have kids, so that hit me deeply. Even now, I'm still upset about it. What I didn't know at the time was that two weeks after my hospitalization for my attempt, she wrote about how badly she wanted to sleep with the guy who stole the money, just one more time. She couldn't stop thinking about him. Yet to me, she was saying sorry, promising it was all over, that she loved me and wanted to save our marriage. She even said she was grateful I hadn't left. But the truth? She didn't respect me. She thought I would never leave her, no matter what she did, and that I'd always stay. And to be honest, she was probably right. But the worst was yet to come. By late March 2021, she tells me we need a trial separation. I agree to move out and stay with my brother in another state, about eight hours away, for two to three months. The day of my move comes, and I just can't bring myself to go. I unpack the truck. That's when she absolutely flips out. She's furious that I didn't leave. She starts smashing potted plants, breaking anything in her way, pictures, vases, she completely destroys our living room. At one point, she pins me to the ground, sitting on my chest, pounding her fists into me. It was almost funny in a way, but it still hurt. 
Eventually, I managed to push her off me. Looking back, I can see she was angry because my staying was going to interfere with her plans to cheat again. But at the time, I was still naive, thinking she had stopped cheating and truly wanted to work things out. After calming down, she tells me she's going to visit her sister for a few hours. I had a gut feeling something was wrong, so I drove by AP2's apartment. I didn't see her car, so I figured maybe I was overreacting. The next day, Sunday, everything seemed fine. She suggested I at least visit my brother for a few days, saying maybe that's all we need. I agreed. The day before I was supposed to leave, she initiated sex but stopped suddenly, with a look on her face that made me suspicious. Still, I didn't think much of it at the time. The next morning, as I was in the shower getting ready to leave, it hit me is she probably cheated again, and that's why she didn't want to finish the night before, because I would notice. I confronted her, but she denied it. Looking back now, I'm almost certain she cheated either that Saturday, when we fought about the separation, or Sunday. I left on a Tuesday. My birthday was the next day, Wednesday. We texted, FaceTimed, and talked every day. She told me she missed me, loved me, and wanted me to be her husband. For my birthday, I went out for pizza with an old childhood friend. She told me to call her afterward, but later she texted, saying she was going to work out and walk the dogs, asking if I could call later instead. So, I did. While driving back to my brother's house, we talked. I told her how my friend and I had talked about my situation and that I wanted to work on our marriage. I said I didn't want anyone else. She asked me if I was ready to put everything behind me. I said yes. I came home that Saturday, but something felt off, so I checked her email. She had deleted everything from her inbox, trash, and even all mail. But then I checked the important folder. What I found there broke me, on my birthday, at 7.37pm, she had turned off her find my iPhone and slept with the guy who stole the money. That was the exact time she texted me, saying she had things to do and asked me to call later. This was my second D-Day. I texted her while she was at work and asked, how could you cheat on me on my birthday? She said we'd talk when she got home. But I couldn't wait. I drove to her workplace, and when I saw her, I completely lost it. I blacked out, screaming in front of her co-workers, calling her names. Of course, now I was that crazy husband, and they probably thought they understood why she cheated on me. When she came home, we had a huge fight. She ended up leaving with her sister and stayed the night with her. We kept texting throughout the night. I asked her when she stopped being in love with me, and she said she still was. Two days later, I filed for divorce and moved in with my brother. A week after that, I took both dogs, since we don't have kids, and left most of my things behind, furniture, fridge, washer, dryer, treadmill, because in my mind, I believed I would come back eventually. I thought we were meant to be together. Before I left, she suggested that maybe we could find our way back to each other and even remarry, but only if I could accept all the men she's been with while we were divorced. For the next eight months, she kept texting, calling, facetiming, telling me she loved me, that she missed me and was sorry but never once saying she wanted me back. I eventually asked her to stop saying I love you because, really, how could she say that after everything she'd done? Even though we were divorced, I still convinced myself that we'd remarry, based on the things she said and my own hopes that we could start fresh. Five months later, we met up for a weekend visit, halfway between where each of us was living. We kissed, and I wanted to have sex, probably not the smartest move, but she's the only partner I've ever had, and I grew up believing sex was only for marriage. I was just desperate to feel that connection again. We started, but she stopped me, saying it was hard to resist me. All I could think was, but not hard to resist your boyfriends. That's what I called them. I left, feeling completely wrecked, but after about a week, I started to feel better. We still kept talking and texting a lot, and I planned to visit her after Christmas. But then she made it clear we were not on the same page anymore, even though for months she had led me to believe we would remarry. I cancelled the trip. 
The Tuesday after Christmas, when I would have been visiting, she texted me out of the blue, saying I was on her mind, that she was thinking of me, and she wasn't sure if we were still talking, but just wanted to say hi. I ignored her. That's when things flipped for me. I came back to Reddit, started reading through the threads, and found Chump Lady's book. It was like a light bulb went off. I cut off all contact with her and finally felt at peace with the decision. I realized she wasn't special, she was just another shallow person who valued the attention she got from others more than our marriage, completely disregarding the damage she caused. Ten days later, she texted again, saying, I just wanted to say hi, that's all. But I knew that wasn't all. A week after that, she texted to ask how I was doing. Most recently, she called two days ago, but I ignored it. I know I should block her, but I haven't yet. Still, it's been 36 days since I last reached out to her. I think she's in trouble financially, having maxed out her credit cards, while I'm working a job I like and starting another business. I'm essentially starting from scratch, but for the first time, I feel like I'm on the path to happiness, even if I never meet anyone else. Looking back, I wish I had left immediately. But I didn't, and that's okay. We can't change the past, and wherever you are in your journey, it's fine, you'll figure it out as you go. Peace and divorce are possible. I'm so much better off now, not having to constantly check her phone or computer to catch her in a lie. She's free to do whatever she wants, but she can't have me anymore. That probably doesn't matter to her, but it's okay. For a long time, I thought I was losing. But now I see that I won. Cheetahs lack integrity, morals, and character, and that's hard to understand if you're not like that. I thought she had just made a mistake, but deep down, she gave up on our marriage the moment she started flirting and having affairs. I believed we were on the same team, which is why I stuck around, hoping she'd realize I was what she wanted. But once someone cheats, you're no longer on the same team. That's the hard truth. I sometimes wonder if she cheated before during our 26 years together. We both worked from home for a long time, so we were always together, and I don't know how she could have met someone. But honestly, I don't care anymore. What I've learned is that actions speak louder than words. She love-bombed me, and I was foolish enough to believe it, even while she was still doing things behind my back. We texted each other throughout the night. I asked her when she stopped being in love with me. She said she still was. Two days later, I filed for divorce and moved to my brother's house. A week later, I took both dogs, we have no kids, and left most of my possessions, furniture, fridge, washer, dryer, treadmill, everything, because, in my mind, I would come back eventually, because we were meant to be together. She said, before I left, that maybe we could find our way back to each other and remarry, but I would have to be okay with all the guys she had been with while we were divorced. For the next eight months, she texted, called, FaceTimed, and said she loved me, that she was sorry, and that she missed me, but never that she wanted me back. I asked her to stop saying I love you because, really, how could she love me and do what she did? We were divorced, but I was convinced we would remarry, due to what she said and because I still thought we could work things out and start a new marriage. We met up after five months for a weekend visit, halfway between where we each lived. We kissed. I wanted to be intimate, I know, wrong, because she was my only partner, and I was raised to only be intimate with your spouse. I just wanted to feel that connection. We started, but she stopped me, saying it was hard to resist me, and all I heard was, but not hard to resist your boyfriends. That's what I called them. I left and was a wreck for a week. Slowly, I got better. We still talked and texted a lot. I planned a visit after Christmas, but she made it clear we were not on the same page anymore, even though she had led me to believe we would remarry. She now said no. I cancelled the trip. The Tuesday after Christmas, when I would have been visiting, she texted me out of the blue, saying I was on her mind, that she was thinking of me, and she wasn't sure if we were talking, but she wanted to say hi. I ignored her. I finally came back to Reddit and started to read the threads. I read Chump Lady's book. My mind flipped. 
I now ceased all contact and felt good about never talking to her again. I could see she did all the cheetah things. She wasn't special, she was just basic, shallow, and put the attention she received before our marriage. She couldn't care less about destroying me. After ten days, she texted me again, saying, I just wanted to say hi, that's all. I was sure that wasn't all. Then, a week later, she texted to ask, How am I doing? Most recently, she called me two days ago, but I ignored it. I knew I should block her, but couldn't yet. But I hadn't contacted her in 36 days now. I guessed she had maxed out her credit cards and was having trouble financially. I was now working a job I liked and had started another business. I was at square one, but felt I was on the road to happiness, even if I never met anyone else. I wished I had left right away. I couldn't. We can't change the past, so whatever stage you are in, it's okay. You will figure it out as you go. You can find peace and divorce. I was so much better off not having to worry every day and constantly check her phone, computer, etc., in order to catch her. She could do what she wanted now, she couldn't have me. It may not matter to her. That's okay. I felt I was losing, but now I see I won. Cheetahs lack integrity, morals, and character. It's hard to understand if you are not like that. I thought, oh, she made a mistake, but she wants our marriage. It turns out, when she started flirting, and then her affairs, she gave up on the marriage. I thought we were on the same team, and that's why I stayed and waited for her to wake up and realize I was what she wanted. Once they cheat, you are not on the same team anymore. That's hard to accept, but it's the truth. I wondered if she had ever cheated before in our 26 years together. We worked from home for a long time, so she was with me a lot, and I didn't know how she would have met someone. I guess that will remain a mystery, and I didn't really care anymore. The thing I learned is, watch their actions, not what they say. She love-bombed me, and I was dumb enough to believe it, all the while she was still doing things behind my back. She thinks I held on for so long because she is something special, but the truth is, I am loyal, too loyal, obviously. It's more my loyalty that made me hold on, and not that she's special. She's not, she's trash. I probably left out about half of the details as I am slowly forgetting them, thankfully. The hardest part was coming to terms with the fact that the most important person in your life for the past 26 years was, in fact, somebody you didn't even know. Several people have commented on how she wanted me to go down on her after being intimate with other people more than once. The best I could figure out is that she had said in high school she was never sought after by boys. Forget for a second that I met her in high school, and I think she liked that. Apparently, men wanted her so badly now, and it was like she got off on the fact that I would want to be with her after she had just been with someone else. But, of course, I had no idea, so she must have warped it in her mind that she was something quite special. Just my theory anyway. I know it doesn't matter anymore. I thought I'd mention, since there have been a few comments, almost immediately after D-Day, I started working out again. For the first 20 plus years of our relationship, I worked out almost daily, but when my depression started and I began taking antidepressants, I stopped working out. So, of the 100 pounds I gained, I have now lost over 80 pounds and am in great shape. I even have abs now since I found out my ex-wife liked those. I know I should do it for me, and now I am. But the fire burning in me for a while was, she left me at my mental and physical lowest point, so I am going to show her. I mentioned we met five months post-divorce for a weekend visit, and my goal was to be in great shape by then, and I was. But now, I am doing this for me. I don't even think about her much at the gym now. She did text me two days ago on our oldest dog's birthday. She said she knows she doesn't have the right to ask, but could I give our dog a kiss from her for her birthday? I kept no contact and ignored her. I do want to thank everyone for their support. The comments mean the world to me, and I wish I would have come here on D-Day. Update. 56 days of no contact, and last night, I broke down. I didn't contact her, but I ended up crying. 
Read my post history for the full story of what my ex-wife did after being together for 26 years. I finally went no contact starting on Christmas Day and have generally been doing okay, but last night, stupid me, I was listening to love songs and just broke down sobbing. Normally, that would make me reach out to her, but I kept my resolve and stayed no contact. I guess that improvement, as before the no contact, anytime I was hurting, I would reach out to her. As crazy as that sounds, thanks to everyone that has supported me. I really think your support has helped me stay strong and not reach out to her. So, my previous two posts detailed everything about my ex-wife's affairs, and the second post was about my no contact. Last week, she emailed me about our taxes. We were divorced midway through last year. I contacted my accountant, and he said I would have to deal with this, so I emailed her back. She immediately started calling me. I ignored her and, sending rapid-fire emails, I kept it business-like, ignored her asking about how I was doing, and I think it made her mad. Finally, I told her what we need to do. I can't explain it any more than that, and that I am going to bed. This morning, I find she replied and apologized, saying she was upset because it's frustrating to figure this out alone. Oh, boo-hoo, and that she isn't trying to cause problems, just wanting to take care of things. Normally, I'd say her emotion was because she still has feelings for me, but with her being a narcissist, I think she was mad that I ignored her calls and kept everything business-like, with no emotion. How could any man resist her? Ha ha, this man can. As soon as this is over, I will go back to no contact, and I will only contact her through email. So, since I've been in contact again, I've been agitated and having dark thoughts again. I told her I wanted to only communicate through email, while she repeatedly called me. She had the audacity to tell me that was stupid and to pick up the phone. It's like she has forgotten how terribly she treated me, both while cheating and while trying to reconcile. Maybe she has moved on, I don't know, but this woman is something else. I can't wait for the tax stuff to be done, so I can be done with her. Well, folks that's all. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.